Grace and peace to all of you and welcome, welcome to Sleepy Hollow Presbyterian Church on this very, very special first Sunday in Lent. It is such a joy to be able to gather together and be able to enter this holy season of Lent together and really ask God to help us to direct our path onto God's sacred path for us this day. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. God calls us to a new way of living. The way of abundant love, hope, and possibilities. The way of welcoming, compassionate community. Let us lift up our hearts and worship God. Thank you. 
Please join me in the unison prayer printed on page two of your bulletin. Gracious God, awaken us to the many possibilities you bring to our lives each day and fill us with your spirit of hope. Free us from fear, anxiety, and self-seeking. Guide our feet onto your sacred path for us this Lent. Connect us in compassion to all the world's people so that we lead with love. Energize us for a fresh start and for service to the world. Now, please take a moment to listen for God's loving message for you this day. If it's the voice of love, it's the voice of God. Amen. The most precious gift you will ever receive is the gift of God's grace. So hear now your assurance of grace. You don't have to be special, better than anyone, or work hard to earn God's grace. God's grace is a free gift for each one of you. All you have to do is accept it and say yes. So hear this good news. You are loved. You are forgiven and accepted exactly as you are. God is with you and God fills you with God's peace. Amen. And now as people who are filled with God's peace to overflowing, let us share the sign of God's peace with one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pass the peace. Thank you so much, Paige. All right, well, good morning. So I cannot even tell you how happy it makes me to see you all here. Church without children and young people is just not that fun, right? Now, it's really fun to have Patty and John Sanders here. I've meant to welcome you during the greeting and welcome. So let's say to you children, you may not remember this, but Patty and John Sanders were members here for, are we gonna say 100 years? Mm, pretty close, pretty close. And one reason, could you stand up so that we can just welcome you back? 
so happy to see you both. So one of the things, of course, John was an elder of this church. Patty, were you an elder too? Yes, of course, both elders, which means leaders. And you may sit down now, my dear. And, and one thing that Patty has done for our church and for our whole region is she for, oh, many, many years, she was in charge of the Presbyterian Hunger Program. So when we're collecting those coins in our fish this time of Lent and turning them in on Palm Sunday, Patty's the person who made sure that all those, all that money went to feed hungry people. What, what a beautiful ministry. We are so grateful to you. And also Patty's uh, ministry at the Presbytery is, gave us our seed grant to start our justice garden. And think of all the people we have fed in the eight years that we've had our harvests. So, so Patty's had a really important job feeding the hungry. So we're just really happy to welcome you both back. Um, so, okay, so let's say our names. I think we know each other, but we might, we have a friend and visitor here, right? So I'm Bev, Paige, Teacher Kelsey, Teacher Piper, Piper and Paige are related, yes, and you're Diego, welcome, and Winston and this is so fabulous because teacher Max and Winston are brothers and teacher Piper and Paige are sisters and they're all cousins. So this is a real all in the family type of wonderful thing. So we're just really happy, but we are all one family. Okay, so our theme for Lent. Okay, first let me say Lent is the six Sundays before Easter. So we're, we, we are on Sunday one now. And we have six Sundays, and then the final of the six Sundays is Palm Sunday, and then we have Easter, which is April 17th this year. And the theme we have is called Sacred Path. So you're going to be doing a little art, making our path. Um, and this is Sunday number one. But the message always for, for the time of Lent is to figure out how to get a little closer to Jesus. Now you could ask the question, why would I want to do that, right? But we won't get to that question first. I'll ask you first, what do you know about Jesus? No wrong answers. Anybody know anything about Jesus? Oh, good, we have so much to learn. <laughs> All right, congregation, what do you know about Jesus? He loves us all, Millie says. Yes, anybody else want to? Yeah, Corin's got something. He lived about 2,000 years ago. Okay, those are two very key points, right? Lived 2,000 years ago, loves us all. Damon. He died on the cross for all of us, right? He, he did. Now, that's a super important point that Damon brought up because sometimes I think people feel like, do, do I really want to love Jesus and get close to Jesus because I'm reminded of his death? You know, he did die, and it was kind of a, a miserable seeming death. So we can't stay stopped there, though, because that's what we call Good Friday. We have to remember Easter. Easter tells us that Jesus isn't on the cross anymore. He lives forever, for also for all of us, right? So loving Jesus is loving something that's bigger and more lasting than anything else in the world. But the people who knew Jesus 2,000 years ago when he was walking on earth, they loved him because there was something so special about the way he made you feel. That's what every year I try to figure out. How can I explain this? But what happened would be he was he would just he loved the ocean anybody else love the ocean now he didn't actually go to the actual ocean though in the bible he went to this enormous lake have any of you ever been to lake tahoe yeah so sometimes at lake tahoe couldn't you almost think it was the ocean when the wind comes up and the waves come up and it's so big and maybe you can't see the all the way across to the far side right well the sea of galilee is like that I've actually been on it in an, a kind of old broken down boat. Didn't seem that sturdy actually. When the wind came up and the waves came up. Yeah, it's like the ocean when, when it's like that. So he would go down to the shore and walk along the shore and watch the fishermen, right? And people learned about him and they learned that being near him just made you feel like even though nobody else in your life thought you were important, he did. 
he had that amazing quality of making everybody feel like they were really important and he was really interested in them you know so people would throng around him so in today's bible study he's down at the at the lake of, of, but they you know it's a sea they, they think it's like the ocean and he's walking along and people are crowding around him because he does have that wonderful like light of love that just sparkles out of him and they all want to be around him and they want to hear him talk about something that he calls the kingdom of god which is God's way for the world, which is a world of peace, not a world of war, a world where everybody has enough, not a world where some people have too much and other people we have to quickly grow food and collect our coins because they have nothing, right? A world where things are evened out and it's peaceful. So he's telling about that and people are crowding around him because they wanna be close to him. And he sees these kind of bedraggled looking fishermen Use your imaginations, this is a boat. We're gonna turn it into something else, but. And they've been fishing all night, but do you see any fish in their nets? Not a one, right? Well, the crowd is getting, pressing up against him so tight that he goes, okay, I'm gonna see if I can do this. He goes, uh, I think I need to get in this boat and just push off from the shore a little bit just to keep the people from huddling so tight around me. And so he gets in the boat and Peter, one of the tired fishermen, pushes the boat a little way out, not very far. And it, the waves weren't big that day. So it wasn't like, you're a surfer, right? It wasn't like crashing down, you know, it's just pretty gentle, like a lake really that day. So he's pretty close to the shore so they can still hear him. So he says, he finishes talking to the crowd and they feel like he's just lifted them up and given them a hug, right? And then he turns to the fisherman and he goes like, whoa, didn't go too good here last night, did it? And they're like, yes, we fished all night and we didn't come up with a thing. He said, you know, maybe if you put your nets on this side, maybe if you put your net over here. And so they said, oh, well, you know, they didn't really believe him, but then they did it. And they caught so many fish, their net almost broke. Their fish, oh, their boat almost sunk. They called another boat over. It was so many fish that both boats, almost sunk. And he said, yes, just stick with me and you'll find out that your life can be this full, that there's this much possibility where you didn't think anything was possible at all, right? So then he said, okay, well, I have to move on now. And the fishermen had two huge boats full of fish, which they would have taken to the market and sold, right? But instead they went with him right they left all that behind that's what they had been looking 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 for and thinking they really needed but then when the choice was between going to the market selling the fish getting a lot of money and then just caring more from what he was telling them about what life could be like and what the world could be like they decided to go with him right so that's what jesus is asking us to do jesus's spirit now and his spirit is with every single person. And he just wants us to feel like our life is really important, that each one of you is important and loved, and that there's something that each one of you is so specially equipped to do. Nobody else can be you. You're the best you, right? And Jesus wants you to be the brightest and best and happiest and peaceful you. So that's why we wanna be close to Jesus. Got it? Yeah. Okay, now next week when I ask you what you know about Jesus, you're going to have a lot to say, right? <laughs> okay, good. All right, so we have Holy Communion today, which is a whole nother way to get close to Jesus. So come back in time for that. So send a scout. But you have three activities, uh, inside and outside. So have a really fun time. All right. Oh, let's say a prayer first. Hold on, I'm sorry, Max. Jesus, we know from the Bible how much you love children. Bless these children and their teachers and help them to all feel loved every day of their lives. Amen. Okay, now have a wonderful time.
God, the day is gray, and I'm wandering in everything I swear was thrown away, and I'm just waiting for this to fade, and these days collapse to find me faltering and lost behind. Each empty-handed word returns to echo in my mind. This day, everything changes. This day, everything changes. And you're still the name I seek when everything is Falling weak and I've stayed My hands in these remains And still the morning finds me here Unconvincing slogan near My perfection all falls down Somewhat smaller now This day Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You are the part.
Our first, uh, oh, actually, our only, our focus gospel passage today is from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Jesus calls the first disciples. Listen for God's word. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, otherwise known as the Sea of Galilee, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, Jesus saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked Simon to put out a little way from the shore. Then Jesus sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so that the boats began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' feet, knees, pardon me, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For Simon Peter and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Amen. So as I was saying to the children, this is our first Sunday in Lent. This is our sacred path, day one, trying to align ourselves with what Jesus wants for each one of us, what Jesus has equipped us for and calls us to, and what we have such a hard time continuing to listen for and align ourselves with, but, but it's there, and he's there, and he's calling us just like he went down to the shore to call Simon and the Zebedee brothers away from fishing, you know, for all night long and coming up empty and towards abundant possibility, right? And then the really amazing thing is we are fishing, fishing, fishing for something, seeking something in life that we think is our livelihood and it's so important and we can't live without it. And he's like, no, go here. Okay, that's more than you need. And then we get to a whole different level and we go, wow, that isn't actually what I needed. You know, what I needed was to be closer, deeper, realer, look at a whole different way of approaching life. And this is for people of every age and every stage of life, every stage of life. We struggle so much with what's not working, right? What's not working? We, we just keep trying harder to make it work. And what God is calling us to do is look at a whole different possibility, which is going to work so much better, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's hard, right? But this, this reality that we're in right now gives us a really good chance to take another look at our lives, really go down deep into the state of our heart and think about what really matters. Because so many people are looking at what's happening in Ukraine and seeing the issue, the images of these kind of aged looking Russian tanks rolling in. And, and I've heard, especially from younger people, they're like, I just didn't think that we were ever gonna do this in the world again. I thought the world had figured this out. That this, this, was the his, this was like World War II. I didn't think I'd ever see this again, right? So we're in this time in the world where it's really like our minds, our hearts are being just so challenged by the reality that this idea of an inv a hostile invasion with ancient military equipment and then some scary modern military equipment, that that's still a part of the world. This world that God loves so much that God sent us Jesus, this beautiful world that God loves so much. 
So we think about, okay, what was it that Jesus was telling all these people that caused them to crowd around him and want to hear more, that caused Simon and his brother and the Zebedee boys to leave all those fish and their boats, everything, their whole known world, and follow him into the unknown with just, just like, you know, take that leap of faith, right? It wasn't even trust yet because you have to have some kind of relationship to have trust. They just took a leap of faith. So why, right? What is this that he's preaching that people are crowding around to hear about the kingdom of God? What is that? Well, the kingdom of God that Jesus was preaching was saying, you know, there's a different way to do life. It's like, here we are in first century Palestine or else here we are, you know, in 2022. And the world is this vertical pyramid with few very wealthy, powerful people at the top. And then, you know, the middle is like people are kind of struggling to be okay. And the bottom is like, you know, really suffering and struggling. And, and there's a different way to do it. You know, there's a way to do life where everybody has enough, where Presbyterian hunger doesn't even need to exist anymore because everybody has enough because we really want everybody to have enough because we get deep enough that we feel our connection with all of our fellow people across the globe. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. A world of universal human dignity, a world where all children have enough to eat, a world of peace, because we care. We care. You know, sin in Presbyterian language is turning away from God. In actuality, sin is actually just not caring. Sin is when you, you stop caring about people, right? The war has given us a chance now, this war in Ukraine, to care about people that we didn't even know existed before. I mean, hopefully most of us could kind of guess where Ukraine was on the map. And some of us have deep connections with Ukraine. Our neighbor, Sarah Kurtzig, and her husband, Andy, have a deep connection with Ukraine through his business and personal friends. They spent a summer there with their family. They have a deep connection, a heart connection. So, but, but now, hopefully, all of us know where Ukraine is, and we care what happens, right? And it's been so inspiring both to see how a crisis like that gives us an opportunity to right size our own life. Like hopefully if you've been beating up on yourself because it's March and you gave up on your New Year's resolutions and you haven't, you know, turned into a fitness czar or whatever else your New Year's resolutions might have been, read an important book every week or, you know, what? I mean, it's like, okay, that stuff really doesn't matter that much. So just stop beating up on yourself, right? We're here, we're alive. What does God want us to do with this one precious life, right? So the people in Europe are figuring it out right on the front lines. I mean, I'm very glad that our church has already sent our check off to World Central Kitchen. It's being turned into hot chicken dinners at the Polish-Ukrainian border already. That is great, okay? Um, it's been extremely touching to see various images of people will uh, NPR ran a beautiful story Friday about what's happening in the Berlin train station, which is just, it looks like chaos, but it's beautiful chaos with just Berliners coming down to their main railway station with sandwiches, coffee, diapers, uh, signs that say what languages they speak to help people navigate through the asylum process, signs that say uh, extra room for up to four people, right? And they're just greeting Ukrainian refugees that are coming off the train to just do what they can for housing, food, and help, right? The one that got to me, I don't know, has anybody been like bursting into tears seeing pictures? The one, and I still can't understand why this image got to me so deeply, but there was a picture that of um, the railway station, the platform where the train, the, on, the train coming from Ukraine would, uh, you know, where the passengers would disembark in Poland and there were seven baby carriages lined up and they were beautiful the most beautiful strollers baby buggies you know really pretty and with blankies and 
couple of them with little baby toys dangling from the handles, you know. So these Polish parents had come down to the train station and they just left these seven beautiful baby buggies all ready with blankies and toys for a Ukrainian mom or, you know, to get off the, because no men are leaving the country, Ukrainian mom to get off the train with child in arms and be able to put that baby right into that baby buggy and roll out of the train station in Poland. Poland has been very welcoming, very welcoming. So this gives all of us a chance to say, okay, being close to Jesus is a little scary because what might Jesus ask of us? You know, Jesus might ask a lot. But we could do that, right? When the Syrian refugees were pouring into Germany, former Chancellor Angela Merkel had this wonderful German phrase, which anybody here know German? <laughs> I'll, I'll spare you my bad German accent. Three words translated, we can cope. You know, it's like, we can do this. We don't have to say no to these people. We can step up, we can cope, right? And that's what her successor, Olaf Scholz has surprised the world. People had thought he was a little boring and robotic and going to have a really tough time fitting, filling Angela Merkel's shoes as German chancellor. But boy, he just, this lit his fire and he is speaking passionately about what Germany can do to keep the peace in Europe and to be able to welcome refugees. So this is, this is our time now of, of uh, the metanoia that was experienced on the lake shore, the seashore, by the first of Jesus' disciples. Metanoia, change of life, right? It's the great Greek word for turnaround. The metanoia that they experienced was to realize that if they got more than they ever thought they could get of what they thought they needed, that still actually wasn't what they were called to do. You know, that wasn't the life, the best life that they could lead. So they left. They turned around, metanoia, from everything that they thought they wanted, and they took off with Jesus into this whole new life, right? A life that relied on the kindness of strangers. There was all the food. There was all the wealth. Nope. The metanoia turned them towards a life of service in community, a life that relied on the goodness of people. How much can we trust, right? How much courage can we have? How much could we really just say, okay, I could stop being afraid. Jesus says that to them, don't be afraid. How much could I stop being afraid, turn away from, turn toward what God is calling me to, to trust, to trust God, to walk with Jesus, to trust the goodness of people, right? Here we've lived here with this forest fire drought thing, which has been very, very severe. A lot of us have had go bags ready to go, right? And the whole thought of being a refugee ourselves is not that hard to imagine because we it could happen, right? So we, we can, we can kind of get into that place of thinking, okay, we too could be out of our house with just the clothes on our back. Michael and I have dear friends who, you know, had that exact situation out of their house up near Vacaville, only the clothes on their back and their pets. That's it. We will be taken care of because people, there are so many good people and those good people. So let's just go into Lent reaffirming that we can right-size our problems. We can be humble and grateful in the presence of the great goodness that can transform us and this planet into that kingdom of God that Jesus talked about, that place where all children have enough, that place where we live together and work together in peace and in beautiful harmony. Let that be our Lenten intention and let God speak to each one of us this day as we come forward and take communion and tell us what is our part? What is our very special part? What can each one of us do no matter how old we are, where we are, what can we do?
to make our own future feel like and other people's future actually be abundant possibility. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come to our time of celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion, I wonder if maybe we could have a volunteer run downstairs. Would you be, Casey, thank you so much. See if you can, I don't see the kids outside, so they must still be doing all those art projects I sent them down there with. Um, so yeah, so we'll just bring them up for communion. But um, meanwhile, it's in the insert to your bulletin. Yeah. So here now the invitation to the table. This is, oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> this is Jesus's table and all are welcome here. Please join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving printed in your insert. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the beauty of creation, for the blessings and miracles of everyday life, and for the gift of life. You set us in this world to be truth tellers and peacemakers, living in harmony with all of creation. We give thanks that when we turn from the ways of peace, you call us back with love. Um, we have new uh, sung responses for Lent, and Alex will be teaching those to us now. Hosanna, Hosanna, 
Jesus shows us the way to a new world community, one in which the last is first, justice prevails, and resources are shared so that all people may lead lives of dignity and feel valued. The world rebelled against his message and he was crucified out of fear, but death cannot defeat life. Jesus breathed the spirit upon his followers and gave birth to the church, Christ's body in the world. Holy Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Let's sing that together. Holy Lamb of God, you take the away the sin. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and grapes from the earth. By your spirit, make us one with all who share this feast. Unite us in love and energize us to work for a world of peace and justice for all people. Today we lift up our hearts in solidarity and in prayer with the people of Ukraine, with their president, Volodymyr Zelensky, with his family, with all Ukrainians who have fled the country, all those mothers and children, may they find a home, a safe home for now and be able to return to their, their, the fathers and their families and their country in peace before too long. God, fill this world with your peace. Guide our feet on your sacred path for us and help us to rise to this moment as so many are and know what it is that we can do wherever we are in life to bring more goodness to this world, this beautiful world. We pray for those who are bereaved right now, our beautiful Pam Selvig, who has lost her mother-in-law. We pray for the Selvig family. We pray for Steve and Nancy Durr, Nancy's mother passed, and just a beautiful mother and grandmother to their boys. We pray for them in this time of bereavement. We pray for a lot of our folks who are at home and some who have had illness or difficulties getting here. And we especially pray for Will Swalberg and for Merle Ongaro, that they know that they are loved and that they can return to church and be part of this community that loves them so much. We pray for everyone in this world who doesn't have enough, whether it be food or love or peace or shelter. God, make us your people, bringing more goodness and love to this world. God, in your grace. Corin. Prayers for healing for Andrea, Nancy Elberg's sister. God in your grace. Yeah. 
Yes, Patty. Oh. Oh, gosh. Okay. Prayers for Patty's sister, Barbara. Healing and, and full recovery for her knee and her mobility. God in your grace. Let us say the Lord's Prayer, and please name God in the way that makes your heart closest to God. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus sat with his inner circle, his disciples, the ones he loved the most. And he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying take eat this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me and after supper in the same manner he took the cup And he blessed it, and he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you. This is my body poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So every time that we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show forth the saving life, death, and resurrection of the Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will the servers please come forward? Okay. Yes, of course. Um, let's see who is here. Well, I think Sharon Hamilton. Sharon, can you help us? You're a deacon. Yeah, so that would be fine. All right, so we'll be taking communion by intinction, um, or rather, actually, it's kind of, I don't know what we could, let's do it this way. Yeah, give us a moment. All right, so Sharon's got bread, and I'll do the cup here, and Scott and corn. So why don't y'all get on that side there? Okay, so just come forward and let, um, let uh, Sharon or Corin know a uh, point whether you be taking bread or the gluten free wafer, and then take your cup and take the elements back to your seat, and we'll all have the feast together. Uh, please come forward.
Please join me in the prayer following communion at the bottom of the back of your insert. May we carry in our hearts the peace embodied in this bread and cup. Strengthen our love for one another and for all creation, and let us be peace in the world. Amen. one of the um everyone in the general area of teenagehood to be able to go downstairs with Brian and have conversation uh in downstairs on the patio or in my office so that's we're still getting getting used to this so thank you all so much um <clears throat> so um as I uh, introduce the offering I want to say a special thank you and this is for all you at home too and maybe a prayer for everyone who's growing tomato plants <laughs> <laughs> or we have an enormous mission project underway with um, our tomato plants growing for our justice garden and for the tomato plant sale and um, wow people are offering a lot of their energy and their floor space and uh, their time to this tomato plant effort so we really appreciate that that offering very much thank you all for the many ways that you support the church the morning offering will now be taken
Please join me in prayer. Holy One, God of love and justice, we trust that these, our generous gifts, will be put to good and faithful use, bringing about a more just and peaceful world for all people. Amen. So um, as we come to our announcements, was there anything to add to the tomato plant? Uh, Okay, so if anybody's having problems at home too with your tomato plants, just contact Michael. Michael and Patty are here to help, and uh, we're gearing up for the April 2nd tomato plant sale, and we anticipate having another wonderful year, God willing, in the Justice Garden feeding the hungry. So thank you, tomato folks. I do want to announce that choir practice is going great. I was here Thursday night. I was so glad I was here Thursday night. Come one, come all, if you love to sing, all ages, 6.30 on Thursday. Pam is leading, and it was so beautiful to see the choir uh, circling the piano, and Pam doing the vocal warm-up, and them singing today's chant, which I hope you all just really felt deeply how beautiful that sung prayer was to get us into our prayer space so come to choir thursdays at 6 30 warm up and sing and it's just a joy 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 of singing so yeah so alex and pam are working together to direct the choir and thank you choir <laughs> also thank you band There's a lot of overlap. It's it's all wonderful. Um, I do want to say we're uh, launching another mission project. The session voted. Uh, we were asked, and so you know when you're asked to do something that is really worthy, the answer needs to be yes as much as possible, right? We were asked to see if we could help the children of San Pedro Elementary School who don't have shoes and sweatshirts. So one, so the boat today is being repurposed into a collection bin. Um, and I think the kids were gonna see if they could decorate it a little bit. And we're, we'll be putting out, we have a flyer, it'll be in the newsletter this week. Um, there's some specifics because they don't want gang colors. This is San Pedro Elementary School. Uh, you know, right across the high, San Rafael Highway um, 101 in San Rafael, where we did our food box project. And uh, they, they have, uh, it's a large population. Many of them are new arrivals into this country. And um, our dear Jody uh, works down there teaching art on Wednesday afternoons, and she has witnessed how the children, a lot of them just don't have shoes. So their school coordinator has asked, and they would like new shoes. Uh, apparently it's a real self-esteem thing, you know? So I know we have a lot of lightly used shoes, but they've asked for new shoes and new sweatshirts. We have sizes, we have the colors to avoid. So we'll put all that information out there. And we just appreciate whatever you can do, you know, just it's immediate relief and we'll be getting it over there very promptly. So we thank you for, for that. So let's all stand and sing our last hymn. <laughs>
time. Um, I'm going to give you your charge, but before I do, I do want to ask that all of us stay intentional and drive very slowly as we go out of the neighborhood uh, down uh, Terry and onto Van Winkle because I uh, had an opportunity this morning to speak to our neighbor who's at that intersection down there, and she feels like some of us are driving too fast. She might have left a note on a couple cars. Um, so, so we just want to be very intentional that we stop at that stop sign and that we drive very slowly because there are 14 little children living on Terry in this one block now, very, you know, little, really little children. So let's all drive slowly and be really good neighbors. Okay, and now here's the rest of your charge, your Lenten charge. It's not too late to make a Lenten intention for a practice that you can do. You don't have to do like Joe Biden did and give up ice cream, your favorite food. You don't have to do that for Lent. <laughs> but think about a sacred practice. Find a spot in your day to listen. And outside is really good. And if what you hear is the bird song and it lifts up your spirit, that's really good. But find a spot in your day to listen for what God wants to tell you this Lent. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the constant companionship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and forever. Go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.